I had traveled to the Amazon jungles, halfway around the world, in search of a hidden relic. I had gotten past many traps, many dangers, many horrors. <laughs> After three weeks of searching, my quest was at an end. I tripped and fell into a console generation of an ancient past. I found it. The legend was true. <laughs> yes. Yes. Where the fuck have you been? I was down in the ravine and I found this old game. A game? In a ravine. Are you serious? Yeah, it took me like I, weeks. Two hours. It's, you, you've been gone for two hours. Not a week, two hours. That I've been standing here waiting for you. But it's Ernest Evans. In 1991, Ernest Evans burst onto the Genesis and took the world by storm. Well, not quite. The game was created by Wolf Team Japan and brought out over here by renovation, but only on cart. Which is weird, the Japanese did not get a cartridge version of Ernest Evans, but they got the Mega CD version. And I gotta tell you, the music is arranged, it's really good, really excellent music, and it has some cutscenes. And I remember looking at video game magazines at the time, seeing the cover for this game, and thinking, oh my god, we're getting like an anime style Indiana Jones adventure. It's always very interesting to see both these versions together, the anime style version of Ernest Evans, the original, and the American inspired Indiana Jones wannabe version. Now in the game you do star as Ernest Evans, but you're Ernest Evans the third, and your grandfather has been telling you about these idols and how he wants you to recover them before they fall into the wrong hands and summon evil. Now an evildoer known as Brady Tresders is also after the artifacts. He's the one that wants to bring them together and summon great evil, obviously. And that great evil is called Mavur. Okay, let's get right to this because I know a lot of people want me to tackle this first. And that is the character, the controls. They are horrendous in this game. They are not good. Your main character is made up of different sprites, giving it a really weird ragdoll feel in look and the controls. So like Indiana Jones, you use a whip, but man, it feels so wrong. Sometimes when you push down, your entire body collapses into a crawling motion. It's really bizarre. It feels really wishy-washy and frustrating. Enemies in the game are cheap too, and they add to the frustration. Also, there are six stages in the game. Mexico, Peru, Europe, Belgium, Mongolia, and the United States. One thing I like in the very first stage of the game, the Mexico stage, when you get the idol and you're escaping out of the temple, all of a sudden, all these giant boulders start coming after you. Very Indiana Jones-ish. The game has you fighting some weird ass enemies. I mean really weird. Plants, Easter Island heads, and what the fuck is this? <laughs> The game takes you all over the world, as I say, to some really cool locations. And I gotta say, the levels are really diverse. In one of the stages, you're running down a train, fighting enemies along the way, and at the very end, you get onto a plane, you take off, and then you fly to the next stage, which is Belgium. Now, this is where you jump on the back of a car, fight enemies, and the car is driven by a mysterious girl with green hair called Annette. This is important. Annette is from another Wolf Team game called El Viento, which is technically the first game in the Ernest Evans trilogy. Yes, there's three Ernest Evans games. And I gotta say, in my opinion, El Viento is one of the most fun games of the trilogy. It's a side view action game starring Annette in the 1920s, fighting gangsters and the supernatural. You use boomerangs and magic throughout the stages. But like the rest of the series, the controls are not the greatest. To tie it into the Ernest Evans series, there's a little cutscene with Annette and Ernest together as friends. El Viento with its cool enemies and wild bosses make it the best of the series. Sadly, the worst of the series, in my opinion, is the third game. 
Annette Futatabi, or Annette Returns, which was released in 1993. It's a side-scrolling action game. It feels like Double Dragon or Streets of Rage, but on closer inspection, it feels a lot like Golden Axe. It feels like a big ripoff of Golden Axe. The enemy sprites are pretty good. Your main character sprite is better than the original, but honestly, overall, the game is so subpar and average, it is really, really boring. It is. The controls are stiff, unresponsive. It's just kind of a boring game. Of all the faults that Ernest Evans has, I enjoyed it a little bit more than this game. The only claim to fame of the game is that it brings Ernest Evans and Annette together in cutscenes. Together, finally. Now, on a very strange note, in Ernest Evans, the original, in the back of the manual, it says that Annette was married to Ernest Evans' grandfather, and they had a son, Ernest Evans that you play in this game, making Annette 70 years old. So that was written for the American version, so we'll just pretend that didn't happen. Honestly, a lot of people are probably wondering, why would I talk about such a low-rated series? I, I think there's a lot of highlight moments here. It is a part of history. And let me say that Ernest Evans has some really kind of cool boss characters near the end. El Viento, the same, especially the big liquid boss that you fight. There's a lot of highlight moments in the series. And honestly, it is a forgotten series. It really is. And there was three games in the series. One of them, as we say, we didn't get it. it was a Japanese only Sega CD version, but we got the rest of them right here. So I just wanted to talk about Ernest Evans because I thought to myself, who the hell else is going to do this? And I really wanted to show this series some love because it really is a part of my childhood and I know a few other people's as well. So anyways, guys, until next time.